Hello and welcome to the second of three narrated presentations as part of the Community Connector training provided by Scottish Community Development Centre and commissioned by Healthwatch Bucks, Healthwatch Oxfordshire. And the second session that we've provided this presentation for is on gathering people's stories. And my name is Andrew Patterson from Scottish Community Development Centre. Quick recap on the first session, which you can watch as well on the website. We discussed health inequalities, why some communities have poorer health than others, and we discussed how this was unfair and that if you're born into a poorer community, you tend to have shorter lives and he less healthy lives. We looked at the idea of prevention, so doing things to prevent people getting ill in the first place. And then we talked about lived experience and why we need to hear the voices of people in communities in order to improve health. And then we also talked about what a community connector is and that it was about reaching people, having conversations, gathering stories and getting voices heard and how that this was a really important aspect of unearthing lived experience and getting lived experience heard in order to prevent ill health and to prevent inequality that leads to ill health. But the focus of this oral health in under 10s project is on tooth decay in children. The issue is that there is the removal of decayed teeth is one of the main issues for children needing hospital admission. And the thing is that this fits the patterns that we've been looking at in the first session. People that live in less affluent communities will ha tend to have less healthy teeth and the children in those communities will too. So our aim here and the, the aim as community connectors is contributing to helping prevent this. And to do that, we're wanting to gather people's stories about looking after children's teeth, such as what makes it easier and what makes it harder for people. And in the live workshop, which was presented um, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at who you are going to speak to and how you will reach them. We talked about maybe it would be our family, friends, others in the community. It might depend on which health watch area you're based in. How you will reach people. Is there a group that you attend or will you have to make a poster to reach people? In most cases, I think people will be looking, using pre-existing contacts and working with the health watch to identify where they could find groups of people to speak to. If you were to be making some kind of poster or information flyer, we said that we would be providing a template on the website, and there's a link to the website at the end of this presentation, which you could use as a poster or a flyer just to give people the right information before they take part. We also talked about how it would be important to plan what we're doing. You don't have to use a table like this, but it can be helpful a table can help you to put in information like what you want to know and in most cases it'll be something around what I've already entered there, preventing tooth decay and what makes it easier and what makes it harder. And then we'll be then you could put into this table who you're going to hear from, how you'll reach them, and what will help you to gather stories. So we'll be talking a bit more about some ideas for helping to gather stories in a second. So by using a table like this. You can remember where you were last. You could be, you could stop for the weekend, go and do other things and come back on Monday and think, where was I on Friday when I was thinking about this before? You've got a table with some, some stuff in it. You're gonna remember what you were thinking about and be able to reconnect with it quicker. It's also just a, a chance to have a bit of a, th a thought before you, you plunge in there and start having conversations with people. Now we're going to move on to talk about how you can gather stories from people, the ways that you can do that. 
you can be just simply asking questions. A lot of what we're talking about is really coming up with questions and asking them and hearing what people have to say. And in, in general, in this type of work, we tend to not ask too many questions. You want to keep it quite straightforward. Think of some key questions, maybe six to ten, and maybe some light questions to start with, which get people talking. And just to imagine the, the scenario, you might be sitting down in a room in a community centre, for instance, you could be in someone's home, if it's somebody you know well, and you'll be sitting down, maybe recording what they say, having a cup of tea along with it. You want it to be informal and friendly. But you could start with some broad questions such as what helps you to look after your children's teeth? Maybe even that's a little bit jumping in there. You could start off by asking people how they've been recently. It's, it's OK to be very informal at first and gradually get into the conversation. And then you could be asking specific questions as well. How often do your children brush their teeth, for instance? You might want not want to jump into that with that. It might seem a bit strange for people if, if you ask people that straight out. But once you start talking about some of these things, you can start get, getting into the detail a bit more. And then you can ask follow up questions depending on what people say. You could have some pre prepared follow up questions or you could just or you, and you can wait for people to start talking about something that they're interested in or that you hadn't thought about. And then you can ask further questions on it. And it's important to remember that your question sheet, the questions that you've come up with are just a guide for you. You don't have to ask all the questions. You don't have to keep them in the same order. You can ask different questions on the day. And there are different ways of asking people questions, different scenarios that you can have. You could be setting up one-to-one -one interviews with people. One-to-one -one interviews are good for getting people's views, get, exploring what one person thinks in a bit more detail. They're quite easy to manage because you're just arranging a meeting with one person, informing them about how it all works and keeping them feeling happy about the whole thing and f not having to worry about a lot of people at once. But even still, there are things to think about, such as the fact that you might need to do more interviews it, than if you were doing a group interview where you could have a lot of people at once taking part. If you're doing individual interviews, one to one interviews, you might need five to eight interviews, for instance. It's important with all types of interviews, but maybe specific, maybe particularly when somebody's speaking on their own to watch that you're not asking them to speak for too long because it's quite tiring. And also people can end up talking about things that are a little bit more difficult to talk about and you don't want to have to ask them to talk much more than say an hour. You also need to explain what you're doing and why, and we'll say more on this later. A group conversation is another excellent way to ask questions. A group conversation is really good for getting lots of people's views at the same time. And it encourages discussion and thinking. People can be bouncing off one another in a metaphorical way. They are hearing one person's view and that maybe that might challenge their own view or make them think of something they wouldn't have thought about if you were talking to them as an individual. And it starts to build a, a picture. People are contributing to a shared, shared ideas and it's a shared discussion and that can generate different outcomes, different things than, than if you were speaking to somebody individually. But there's things to think about, such as how to organise it. You've got more to do there. You've got to think about having a bigger room. Maybe you want to think about having some some way of keeping giving people tea and coffee, that type of thing. There's just more to organise. You got you, you, It's important to make sure that everyone has a chance to speak. That would be your role as a community connector to be watching out for people who haven't said enough, haven't really spoken, and they might want to. Also checking that certain people aren't 
uh, dominating the discussion and having ways that maybe come from your your own internal qualities that you want to just think of you ways that you can nudge people to nudge people gently to once they've said enough to to say we would like to hear from somebody else's view maybe ways to gently encourage people to come out of the shell a little bit those types of things are are hard to give advice on but i know that a lot of people will have their own techniques for doing that and it's okay to be doing this in your own way as long as you're not going to be forceful with people as long as you're not going to upset people and and make it difficult for you to continue with the, the conversation. So it is important to make people comfortable, in other words, and you might be having to look out for people that aren't feeling comfortable and giving people a chance to leave or to have a break if they're not feeling comfortable, because after all, you're wanting to think about their well-being and we'll be talking about that more later. If you're doing interviews and asking questions, it's really useful to use a recorder an audio recorder and Healthwatch will possibly be, be working with you, uh, giving you access to one of these. If you do have access to one, practice first, make sure you press record. That's something that we've all fallen foul of when we use a recorder. Put the recorder in the middle of the table so it picks up everyone. Maybe in the previous picture, um, if people are in a ring of seats, you could put it in the middle of the floor, that's all right too. You might want to watch about noise, especially if people are, um, if the table's banging or there's things on the table that people are banging, like cups. People can use smartphones these days to record, but we're advising you not to because they're less secure with people's data and people's information. The sound might not be as good and you're more likely to run out of battery given that you're using it for other things throughout the day. So importantly, do what works for you and the people you're talking with. Um, you might have been picking up but from the previous slides that there are lots of different ways of doing it. There's no, there's not so many rights or wrongs. There are certain things that you should try and do, which I've indicated, but on the whole, there's a bit of an art to it. You'll, you'll get a bit better as you go with it. And don't worry too much because as long as people are talking and you're managing to record it, then you're going to have some really good information. But let people speak. It can help people get things back on track if people go way off topic. Take some notes if you want, and that might be helpful if somebody says something you'd like to ask about later on in the, in the conversation, because you don't want to just suddenly interrupt and say, oh, ask me more, tell me more about that. You might want them to finish what they're saying. Maybe somebody else might have something to say, and then you want, might want to come back to it later. So it's good, a good idea to take notes. And in the next session, we'll be seeing why notes are really good for starting to think about how we're going to build a message out of our stories as well. And be creative. Sometimes it's good to use more fun and engaging ways to um, gather stories. And I'm going to give a few examples on that. Instead of asking people to speak, you can be asking them to write on post-its or sticky notes. That's a really simple and effective way for people to put in their view. And they can find it a bit easier sometimes than saying things, especially if it's something a little bit more personal. They might be able to find a way of anonymising it by, if there's a few people in the room, they can stick it down, pass it to you without any other people not know without other people knowing exactly what they've been saying. Post-its are quite a good way to organise what people have been saying later on. That's something that might help you. Now, one or two negatives about post-its are that not everyone finds it easy to write in English. You could be asking people to write in another language as well. That's fine. But even still, literacy, literacy can be a barrier for people and that's some, a reason why you might want to make sure that people have the chance to say things instead of writing it if they want as well. Here's a, a very different way of doing it. So we're not involving words spoken or written here. We're drawing what we think. You can get people to do this and it's an engaging and fun way of asking people to 
of to express their views they can be drawing instead of um, instead of talking or writing it's a good alternative to post-its if people aren't confident writing but one of the things is that you have to work out what people mean and that makes it a little bit more difficult to make sure that you you definitely know what they were trying to say through their drawing and not everyone enjoys it i mean this tends to be something that you might use with younger people it doesn't have to be for younger people it can be for adults it can be for anyone but you might find that some people feel a bit uncomfortable with the idea of drawing it might not be what they're expecting visual prompts can be a good way to get people talking or writing or drawing and especially if if the conversation kind of dries up a bit if you're asking something that's a little bit more harder to think about then you can be using images to get people to think about what you know, things that they they might have thought about if you'd given them a lot more time but this is a quicker way to get people thinking really can stimulate the conversation you could combine it with other methods you don't want to lead people though so that's one thing to think about you don't want to be having too many images that are showing the same kind of thing and when i was coming up with some images for this slide i had some things related to teeth and some of them were slightly kind of negative like sweets and dental care and then i thought well i could balance it out a bit by having stuff more related to positive things even in the pictures i've used i have neglected to put in anything that is related to the things we talked about in the first session which were some of the contributing factors the things that influence our health that we might not always think about like housing and the environment and crime and public transport all those things you could be using those as visual prompts too you can also have people prompt each other with stories you could give a story it could just be an example of the sorts of things you're thinking about a bit like in the first session where i used the example of somebody with the cold and some of the reasons behind their cold that can just get people thinking so try that if you're you it, it's with, this, with visual prompts and stories you don't need to use them but they're quite a good technique to have if, especially if people are finding it a bit more difficult to talk about things Story prompts can be useful for exploring specific issues. It might be used quite often with children, but they can be used with other groups too. People can reflect on the issues raised in the example. But again, you need to think about whether or not your story may steer the discussion in one direction. So you might want to have a couple of different stories or just try and let people know that this story isn't the only way that things can turn out. There might be other experiences so you might want to make sure that people feel confident in expressing or telling their own story that's very different online methods are increasingly being used to gather stories you can have conversations for instance using platforms like teams or zoom you can send people the link in advance and it's quite an easy way to have a group conversation you can have individual one-to-one -one conversations too it's also easy to record you don't need to have any separate recorder to do a recording remember to ask first before you start recording and you can be creative too um, so in real life face-to-face -face type approaches we've talked about using post-its and drawing online there are things you can use too and in the session that i did live with some of you we used the example of jamboard so google jamboard is a really useful way to put virtual post-its up and also you can do other things like draw or write on this online canvas and in the activity what we did was we got people to click click on the link click on the icon which is for post-its there that one 
we asked a question and that was about which method you'd like to use and why and the people that took part wrote what methods they wanted to use and why on post-it and then hit save or enter to post it onto the virtual sheet and I encouraged other people to try out other features as well I don't know if anybody did but people gave a positive reaction to this and it's something that if you're using online conversations in any way it's worth checking out using a method like this Jamboard isn't the only one it's free but there are other free tools that you can use too there's a link to Jamboard and some guidance on it on the website which there's a link to at the end so the third thing we're wanting to talk about today is safety and well-being it's really important to think about the safety of ourselves and others but we'll start with ourselves that can be called self-care sometimes we want to think in terms of safety first don't want to go alone into the houses of people you don't know and speak to and it's, you, it's important that you speak to people during the day tell someone where you're going and when you'll be back separate side of well-being which is maybe a little bit more subtle is that you can experience a bit of stress a bit of uncertainty and negative feelings about this type of thing you might never have done this type of thing before and it, although it shouldn't be a lot of work it is possible that it can stress you out and you can have a lot of other things in your life and you might feel that you just don't have time for this now if you're starting to feel in any way too much pressure too much stress about it don't feel bad about that let somebody know let the health watch that you're working with know it's really important that you keep talking to people maybe some of the other community connectors and don't feel alone doing this there's other people doing it and they'll be feeling the same kind of things and if you're talking about it you'll be able to share those problems and feel not and not feel too bad about it as well so as i say do talk to others the well-being of others is just as important as well and particularly the people that you're connecting with as a community connector the people that you're gathering stories from they need to agree to taking part and they need to agree based on having all the information and that is called informed consent it means that anyone you gather stories from has agreed to it and is clear about how you will use their stories and there's an example information sheet and consent form on the website which you can see the link to there also don't share the personal details of other people it's okay to use what people say but you have to make sure it doesn't reveal who they are so you change the names but also be careful that you're not giving away stories and examples from their lives that will reveal who they are even though you have changed the name even when people agree to you sharing what they've said they might not recognize the danger that somebody could recognize them and it's important that you take care of that as well and don't just use anything because people said you could also keep people's personal information secure they'll have given you their name they'll have given you'll have um, interviews that are written down perhaps or recordings you have to keep that secure keep it on a laptop with a password or if you're having printed versions or you've been writing stuff keep that in a locked cupboard boundaries are important too people can't end up talking about things they maybe wouldn't have in a different situation they might realize later that they've said more than they wanted to you've got to give them the opportunity to come back to you and say that they're not happy with everything they said and could you not mention certain things also encourage people to think about that before they take part as well that they don't have to say anything they're uncomfortable with saying and also be careful not to ask questions that are too personal and sensitive particularly if they're not so relevant to what you're trying to find out if you're gathering stories online you also have to think about safety and well-being there are particular things you need to think about especially if you're 
it, with regard to social media. Although that's a place where it could be tempting to gather stories because people share so much there, including their views on, on this, that and everything, we are saying that it's best to avoid doing your community connecting on social media. And that's because social media isn't private. What people say will remain online and be public for others to see. Even things like WhatsApp, where you can have private conversations, the information people give can easily be shared out with the group that you had created. So if you really feel like you have to use social media because it's the only way to access people, please speak to your local health watch first. If you're not using social media, but you're using things like Teams and Zoom, then it's important to think about some things that keep things more private. You can set the meeting so people need a password to get in. You need to ask people before you record. And if you are recording, you can let people know that they can turn their camera off if they don't want to be seen and they can change their name as well. Then save the recording that you take onto your computer with a password, but not onto the cloud which sometimes you get an option to do, and that will keep it more secure. So that, that's us covered how to gather stories and some of the aspects of health and safety. The next session is going to be on building a message from the stories you've been collecting as community connectors. Thinking about what it is we're trying to do as community connectors and come up with the message we want to build in order to do that. And also about feeding back to the people who have been involved. Thanks for watching. You can find these slides and all the other information you need at this website here. Feel free to get in touch. There's my there's my email and the third and final session is available on the website as well. So I'll see you there. Bye.